watching this uh, Saturn V uh, liftoff. I had the privilege of uh, flying a, uh, a Saturn V with uh, John Young and uh, T.K. Manning. It'll be 40 years next month since we did that. Uh, this rocket uh, was uh, 363 feet tall. It was 33 feet in diameter and weighed six and a half million pounds uh, fully fueled as it sat on the launch pad. We were up in a command module on the top of it and as it, the ignition started there were five engines pushing with seven and a half million pounds of thrust and the vibration from side to side was really uh, tremendous. We couldn't see outside because the windows were covered over uh, with a boost protective cover. So we just depended on our instruments with uh, launch control and mission control. Uh, Gene Krantz was one of our flight directors uh, during uh, our mission. Uh, and uh, we had a very successful uh, launch and uh, uh, then moonwalk and recovery. Uh, our, it's, like I said, it's been 40 years and I remember every second of this uh, launch uh, in uh, this uh, Saturn V. Uh, I grew up in a small town in South Carolina. I didn't have a space program when I was your age, uh, but I had parents, teachers, relatives that encouraged me to do my best in school. Uh, and uh, by studying hard, working hard, uh, my career was successful. And I think uh, in America we have that opportunity to apply ourselves in school and to do the best you can. You have a responsibility to do your best uh, as and uh, uh, help out uh, our country. And we need uh, young boys and girls growing up and to be engineers, scientists, uh, technicians. And so all the best to you. Let's uh, watch this uh, launch. It's a uh, tremendous experience from uh, uh, in uh, on board and uh, just to watch it. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, John was this his fourth flight. He'd flown twice in Gemini. Uh, he'd flown to the moon with Apollo uh, 10, uh, which was did not land on the moon, but took the lunar module. Uh, so he was the experienced uh, crewman on our flight. Uh, T.K. Mattingly is on the left. He'd come on our flight after Apollo 13 because of a problem, uh, Apollo 13. Uh, uh, I caught the measles and exposed everybody to the measles. Uh, and so Mattingly was not allowed to go on that flight because he never had the measles. Uh, and it was his first flight. Uh, he went on to fly a couple of uh, shuttle flights, as did John. Uh, I'm on the right, uh, and uh, I was, at this time this picture was taken, uh, I was uh, 36 years old, and uh, was 36 when I went to the moon. Uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, this was sort of our official crew picture. Uh, <clears throat> there were uh, 24 people who went to the moon during Apollo. Uh, three guys went twice, uh, John Young, uh, Tom, uh, Jim Lovell, uh, and Gene Cernan. Uh, only 12 of us walked on the moon, but only uh, yeah, nobody walked twice. Uh, it, it was just 12 individuals out of the 24. So of uh, 24 of us got to see the Earth and the whole circle of the Earth, which was a spectacular view. ...sites on the New Mexico Space Trail are, are places where you folks uh, went to study terrestrial geology in preparation for, for uh, gathering rocks on the moon. And one of those, I believe on the bottom, is the Taos Gorge. Yeah. Uh, you're looking, and, and the upper right uh, is also the Taos Gorge. Uh, we're uh, out uh, carrying these simulated black backpacks. We have our camera. 
We have a, uh, a Earth lunar rover, if you will. The real rover would not work on Earth. It was, uh, it was made for the lunar environment. So we made a, uh, a, a 1G uh, a vehicle that we could drive around uh, and we did a lot of geology training. The whole purpose of the moon was to pick up the rocks and get the right rocks. And so most of us were fighter pilots and didn't have any geology background. Uh, so we had a team of scientists that uh, taught, it, uh, taught us uh, geology. And one of the most interesting uh, trips we had was out here at uh, Taos uh, uh, for our uh, uh, two or three day uh, uh, lunar training exercise. We have a presentation to make here to you and your wife, Dottie. Who has the actual presentation? Let me read this letter. Dottie and Charlie, congratulations on the 40th anniversary of Apollo 16. Apollo 16 had a splendid crew of John Young, Charlie Duke, and Ken Mattingly. Charlie, you, and John did outstanding geological work throughout the Descartes landing area, particularly at North Ray Center. In honor of your mission, please accept this olivine balm in recognition of your dedication to <laughs> geological field training and lunar exploration. <laughs> Stephen DeMar kindly donated this Thank specimen from Kilbourne Hole in southern New Mexico on behalf of all members of FLAIR. And this is signed by Jack Schmidt. Steve, Schmitt. as a matter of fact, uh, Dottie and I were just talking about it this, this morning, driving over here. Uh, I said, I was telling her, I said, you know, we had two geology trips uh, into New Mexico, and one of them was we collected these olivine bombs. And I said, I wonder what happened to all the ones we picked up. <laughs> well, this so, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. It's beautiful. Signed by Jack Schmidt. Thanks. Next slide. Uh, let me say also that uh, uh, Jack Schmidt was the last man to touch the moon. He's a native of uh, New Mexico and he was a PhD, a professional uh, uh, doctor in geology and one of the, one of the uh, our trainers uh, during out all of Apollo and was for him, uh, we learned a lot about, through him, we learned a lot about geology and so we were a lot more deficient because of, of his, uh, his help and he did uh, do a great job on Apollo 17. He's also the only scientist who ever worked yeah, on the right. yeah. The only PhD. PhD. Yeah. So this is your wife over here during a rollout of the uh, Saturn V. Can you tell us the background of the story? Uh, our vehicle uh, was, uh, the, the rockets are put together in a vehicle called a VAB, the, uh, the, the Vehicle Assembly Building. And then they're put on a big tractor and they're rolled out to the launch pad, which is a couple of miles away. Uh, and during its, the crews are normally there doing what's called the rollout. That's, that process is called the rollout. But we were on a geology trip or something and we couldn't, weren't there. Uh, but a problem happened on our spacecraft a month or so later, so they had to bring the vehicle back into the BAB, fix it, and then we had a rollout again. At the second rollout, we, this is the picture of, of us and our family. Uh, we, were down, we were able to get down there. And Dottie smiled right here. And Donna, stand up. And this is my wife of uh, <laughs> years. And I don't know how I got permission, but I got permission from NASA to take my young boys, who were uh, at the time four and six, uh, up onto the launch pad and into the white room, and we're actually looking into our spacecraft. And I think these were probably the youngest kids that were ever able to uh, get that close to a real Apollo. Uh, and uh, it was a great, uh, a, a great experience. Almost looks like a That was some ride, buddy, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, this is uh, our lunar module. Uh, we just separated from, I think we just separated from uh, TK Mattingly. Uh, and uh, you can see the two, uh, the black uh, look like two eyes uh, on either side of the white circle were the windows. Uh, and we were able to look out of those windows uh, uh, out into space and uh, on landing. Right below the white circle is the door, uh, which was about uh, 30 inches in diameter. 
And when you got onto the moon and time to uh, go outside, you swung the door open and you got on your hands and knees backwards and backed out uh, of the door uh, onto the porch and then you could cl walk down, the, climb down the ladder and go onto the foot pad. Uh, if you were out there today, you saw the sort of the shell of the uh, upper part of the lunar module called the asset stage. And, but from the door to the foot pad, uh, to give you some sense, it was 15 feet. Uh, and as we started down, the vehicle weighed uh, like 37,000 pounds at that point. So what did Mattingly do all by himself? Well, he was very busy. Uh, he Simbay. was in orbit with a uh, science experiment, and I forgot there was some acronym for it. Simbay. Simbay. Uh, and it was a, a, a complicated series of experiments that he had to operate all by himself. And so while we were on the moon for 72 hours, uh, he was in orbit uh, maintaining the, the spacecraft and running all of these experiments. So he had the housekeeping, he had the spacecraft uh, systems he had to manage, he had to eat, sleep, uh, and run the experiments all by himself. So it was a very, very busy uh, time for uh, Mattingly. Yeah, the last three missions, 15, 16, and 17, uh, we used the sim bays, and as uh, Charlie says, it was so complicated. We actually had two mission control teams, one following what was happening in the command module, and the other one following what was going on on the lunar surface. So it was a jam-packed time uh, working in mission control. And Many of the people operated from the same council. We had two flight directors, same council with two different teams. So did you guys get travel pay? Neil Armstrong said oh. he got travel pay. They deducted for room and board. He made about $46. We were, uh, we were military uh, for our flight that said Kennedy Moon, Moon Pacific. Uh, and then uh, that was 11 days. And back then the per diem was $25 a day. And so I was expecting a check for $275 uh, for my extra pay for going to the moon. Well, NASA furnished the meals and they furnished the quarters and they furnished the transportation, so they deducted all of that part. And I ended up with a check for $13.75. And you still have it? I still got it. And it's covered, so everywhere you walked, you left your footprints. Everywhere you drove your car, you left your, your tracks. And so you never worried about getting lost up on the moon. And just turn around, follow your tracks back, and it's going to take you back home. There have been some satellites, I think, that have taken pictures of your rover. Well, a lot of people uh, think we didn't go to the moon. It was a big hoax. Uh, we did it in Arizona and um, some museum or some uh, big uh, warehouse. But there's a satellite orbiting the moon now called LRO, Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. And it's taken pictures of every Apollo landing site.